everyone and welcome to today's webinar where we will be discussing tachycardia for PALS. Tachycardia is defined as a heart rate greater than what is considered normal for a child's age. Like bradycardia, tachycardia can be life-threatening if it compromises the heart's ability to perfuse effectively. When the heart beats too quickly, there is a shortened relaxation phase. This causes two main problems. The ventricles are unable to fill completely, so cardiac output is lowered, and the coronar coronary arteries receive less blood, so supply to the heart is decreased. When recognizing tachycardia, there are some signs and symptoms to keep in mind. This includes respiratory distress or failure, poor tissue perfusion, altered mental state, pulmonary edema or congestion, and weak or rapid pulse. There are several kinds of tachycardia, and they can be difficult to differentiate in children on the ECG due to the elevated heart rate. So for sinus tachycardia, it has a normal rhythm with a fast rate, likely non-dangerous, and commonly occurring during stress or fever. For supraventricular tachycardia, the rhythm starts above the ventricles. For atrial fibrillation, it causes irregular, irregular heart rhythm. For atrial flutter, it causes a soft tooth pattern on the ECG. And for the ventricular tachycardia, rhythm starts in the ventricles. Pediatric tachyarrhythmias are first divided into narrow complex or wide complex tachycardia. Measure the QRS complex on a standard ECG to assess its width. So if it's a narrow QRS complex, it is less than 0 0.09 seconds. Um, and that means it could be an atrial flutter, sinus tachycardia, or supraventricular tachycardia. If it's a wide QRS complex or greater than 0 0.09 seconds, then it's ventricular tachycardia or unusual SVT. Atrial flutter is an uncommon rhythm distinguished on an ECG as a sawtooth pattern. It is caused by an abnormal re-entrant pathway that causes the atria to beat very quickly and ineffectively. Atrial contractions may exceed 300 beats per minute, but not all of these will reach the AV node and cause a ventricular contraction. Most often, PALS providers will have to distinguish between two similar narrow QRS complex tachyarrhythmias, sinus tachycardia and supraventricular tachycardia. SVT is more commonly caused by accessory pathway and reentry, AV node reentry, and ectopic atrial focus. So for sinus tachycardia, for an infant, it is um, less than 220 beats per minute. For children, it's less than 180 beats per minute. It has a slow onset. Um, fever, hypovolemia, maybe causes, varies the stimulation, and there's visible P waves. With supraventricular tachycardia, the infant has a um, heart rate of greater than 220 beats per minute or for children greater than 180 beats per minute. There's an abrupt start and stop, um, pulmonary edema, um, constant fast rate, and absent P waves are all signs that it might be SVT. Ventricular tachycardia is uncommon in children but can be rapidly fatal. Unless the person has a documented wide complex tachyarrhythmia, an ECG with a QRS complex greater than 0 0.09 seconds in is VT until proven otherwise. Polymorphic VT, torsades day points, and unusual SVT, SVT with wide complexes due to aberrant conduction, may be reversible. Um, such as magnesium for torsades, but do not delay treatment for VT. Any of these rhythms can devolve into ventricular fibrillation. VT may not be particularly rapid, simply greater than 120 beats per minute, but is regular. Generally, P waves are lost during VT or become dissociated with, from the QRS complex. Infusion beats are a sign of VT and are produced when both a superventricular and ventricular impulse combined to produce a hybrid appearing QRS or fusion beat. So now we are going to go through the PALS um, 
algorithm. So when we start, you need to identify and treat the underlying cause. So maintain a patent airway, assist breathing if necessary. If hypoxemic, administer oxygen. Cardiac monitor to identified rhythm. Monitor blood pressure and pulse oximetry. Gain IV IO access and assess the 12 lead ECG. Then you need to evaluate the QRS duration. If it's narrow, then you're going to go and evaluate the rhythm with the 12 lead ECG or monitor. Um, if it's wide, then it, you're going to assume it's ventricular tachycardia and treat. So um, then if you assume it's ventricular tachycardia, then you're going to do cardiopulmonary compromise. So check for hypotension, acutely altered mental status, signs of shock. If that appears to be an issue, then you're going to go ahead and do synchronized cardioversion. If it's not, consider giving them a dose of adenosine if the rhythm is regular and the QRX complex is monomorphic. You may need to get specialist consultation um, and possibly give amiodarone or procainamide. If we go back up where the QRS is narrow um, and you evaluated the rhythm. If that's a yes, then it's a probable supraventricular tachycardia. So compatible history, vague or nonspecific history of abrupt rate changes. There's P waves that are absent or abnormal. The HR is not variable. The infant's um, rate is usually greater than 200 beats per minute and children's rate is usually greater than 180 beats per minute. Um, if not, then it's probable sinus tachycardia. So compatible history consistent with known cause. There's P waves that are present and normal. Uh, varial R to R, but constant PR. Infant's rate is usually less than 220 beats per minute, and the children's rate is usually less than 180 beats per minute. Um, if that's a no, then search for and treat a cause. You can consider vagal maneuvers. Um, but you may get to the point where you need to um, administrate IO or IV adenosine or synchronized cardioversion if there is no IO, IV access, or if an adenosine is ineffective. Don't forget, we offer online PAL certification on our site. You can find a link in the description. We encourage you to become certified as soon as possible, whether that be on your own time with an online course or in an in-classroom setting. So thank you so much for tuning into today's webinar, guys. I hope you enjoyed and we will talk to you in the next time.